Hey, this is Matt from Trivium, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Graham for Loudwire here, and it's Wikipedia Fact or Fiction time with a guest you've been asking for for a long time, Mr. Matt Hafey of hey, Trivium. Man. Thank you so much Good for coming you, by. So, you know how this works. We went to your Wikipedia, Trivium's Wikipedia. We're gonna see what's wrong, what's right, because you are a credible source about yourself. Awesome. Matthew Kleechi? Kichi. Kichi? Kichi. K -L -I. Oh wow, it says Kleechi on there. It that's Kleechi. That's awesome. Yes, I was, hope, I was hoping there'd wrong. be a lot. I was hoping there'd be a lot. <laughs> okay, Kichi. Uh, K I C H I. K I I C H I. K I. Ah, uh, all right. So there you go. Already some fiction. Good. Kleechi. <laughs> Start using that. <laughs> it says at age 12, you're mostly listening to pop punk and auditioned for a local band by playing Blink 182's Damn It. However, you were not accepted for unspecified reasons. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, Eleven is Eleven. When I, yep, okay. Eleven is when I tried out for this band, and at the time they're called Freshly Squeezed. I'm from Florida. Um, Jeez. So oh my god! I tried out for that for them. And uh, orange juice reference, really orange. Well, I mean you're twelve. Like, what are you gonna do? Eleven. Okay. Eleven. Ele eleven. Twelve. They were all twelve, thirteen. I was eleven. All right. So the trout song was "Damn It" by Blink One Eighty Two. Um, I thought I did great. I didn't, and I never got the call back. So that was Damn. my first taste of failure. Really? Was that? That didn't like. I wasn't out too much. It, it, it did a bit. Um, I don't remember too much of how the severity of bumming outness. <laughs> sure. But uh, I, I know I wasn't good. I wasn't practicing yet at the time. I wasn't really taking guitar serious. I just picked it up for the hell of it. But then I got someone lent me the Black Album by Metallica. And then I started practicing all the time. And there then you tried go. out for Trivium at 12. Oh, at 12. Okay, it says here uh, 13. So there's a little bit more fiction there. It's Hopefully a, I'm right. I mean, 12, 12, 13. We'll just take your word like, for yeah, it. Like, who, who's, does anyone have tape of that? No, my no. mom. Your mom has tape of the yeah. high school talent oh, yeah. show where yeah. you performed No Leaf Clover oh, by Metallica? Yes. Oh, yes. Can we please release that on our YouTube channel? We should. Yes. We should. Uh, it said after that, uh, you were asked to join Trivium after, uh, and after original singer Brad Luder left, drummer, drummer Travis Smith persuaded you to do vocals, even though the entire band thought your singing skills were not very good at the time. <laughs> I think that's added in there. <laughs> that's added to some that's one of the clever. little Clever, pretty good, pretty good. Um, yeah, the original singer of Trivium asked me to try out for the band. My trial uh -huh. song is For Whom the Bell Tolls. Uh, when I walked in the room, I remember, because everyone was like 16, 15, 16, I was like 12, 13. Yeah. Um, they were all looking at me like, what the hell is this kid doing in here? And sure. they were kind of like laughing, kind of being a little tough, but I played the song perfectly and they were quiet from then on. Um, Brad and... Travis and I had different directions where we wanted the band to go. Brad wanted the band to be like Rammstein, Skinny Puppy. Okay, old, like some industrial yeah, stuff. Yeah, like Old Manson kind of style. And we wanted to be like Metallica Pantera. Yeah. So he said, you guys can keep the name. Let's split the originals in half. So he took half the originals. We took the other half. Okay. And there was like four. And uh, he started a new band, and then we, we went our way. Okay. But everyone was cool with your singing. It wasn't just like, <laughs> let's just, just, just do it. This guy we don't sucks, want but to. whatever, we'll keep him. Like, he's um, the best out of this We bad were bunch. looking for another singer. We couldn't find one. And then it was okay. actually Travis. And at the time, like, he was bigger than me, and I was kind of scared of him. He's like, you're going to sing. I was like, all right. <laughs> so I sang. And I was not very good for a, a while. Did you enjoy it, though, at the time? Or were you kind of like, man, I I'm, can't wait till we get this new singer so I can just play guitar? I, I think once it was time for me to start doing it, I, I liked it. Dug it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because cool. Hetfield was my hero, so I was like, oh, I could be like my Absolutely. hero. Absolutely. Do exactly what he does. And it said that eventually you took that singing position uh, just by performing growling and screaming because those were the vocal techniques you were capable of at the time. I mean, when you're 12, 13, your voice isn't that good. <laughs> no, it's much higher, Yeah, too. especially for metal. But what was weird about mine is I could only sing low. So I was telling Dave Mustaine from Megadeth about this. Uh, we did a cover of Tornado of Souls when I was like 13. Okay. I had to sing the whole thing like one or two octaves below. So it sounds terrible. Really? And we also did This Love and I also sang that like an octave lower. Than Phil? Yeah. <laughs> it was really bad. So I was a 13 year old with like a super deep singing voice, with a higher talking voice. Wow, how than weird. That. Yeah, so it just wasn't good. Uh, it said that you attended Lake Brantley High School and completed your senior year in 2004 while touring Europe around that time, too. I'll have to consult with my wife. Ashley, was I 03 or 04? Graduation class, 04. 04, okay, okay so that's Yeah, so I graduated in 04. You were touring Europe during your like senior <sighs> kinda year? Kinda, sorta, that makes it sound cooler than it was. Uh, it makes it sound pretty good. I 
finished high school half a year early to start college half a year early because I just wanted to do that. Okay. So I started that up and about halfway through the first semester, we had an offer for our first tour, which was mm. support. It was God forbid headlining, Scars of Tomorrow, Direct Support, and Trivium and All That Remains flip-flopping the first and second slots. Oh wow, so All That Remains. In but that both of our sports. bands were both told we were in the second slot and we <laughs> didn't find out we were flip-flopping until the first day. Um, that's not bad for a first international tour. I mean, that's pretty That exciting. was just the States though. That, that was the States. That was in okay. the States, and that was in 04. It was April of 04, and I brought it up to my parents. I said, well, hey, should I stay in school or go on tour? And they said, you can go back to school anytime. So I've been tour ever, on tour ever since. I yeah. did do a three-day European tour. <laughs> there you go. In 03, when we were on Life Force Records. We played... Wow, even earlier. Yeah, we played Eindhoven, Netherlands. We were supporting... Do Sense was the headliner. Prostitute Disfigurement was direct support. I know we that were the band. We, were the <laughs> okay. we also played Zalfeld, Germany for the Conspiracy Fest. It was like Heaven Shall Burn Us oh, yeah. and a bunch of other Life Force bands. And we played Ghent, Belgium with Deadlock. And there was like 10 people during our set. And I'll never forget, like, all the porta potties were like in this trough kind of outside thing in the entrance. In the entrance? Yeah, it was in this crummy venue in Ghent, Belgium. It was terrible. Oh, God. Yeah. Still better than high school, though. Yeah, yeah. So that was my first European tour before I graduated. Beautiful. Wikipedia says that you do know how to read sheet music, but you can only apply it to the saxophone and the banjo. <laughs> banjo. <laughs> I, I don't play banjo. You don't play the That's banjo? Awesome. Hmm. No. Um, I can read sheet music for saxophone, but I haven't played saxophone sax. in years. Okay. I played tenor sax in middle school and high school, and I hmm. quit band around, I think, junior or sophomore year. And I remember the band teacher was really mad about it. Trivium released one song called Head On Collision with a Rose Bush Catching Fire under the name Tomorrow Is Monday. And you guys wrote, recorded, and edited the song in one hour while wasted. Amazingly, most of that is true. That's mostly the true. The only that's a good part one. that's not true is that it wasn't Trivium. It was just me. Oh, just you yeah, by yourself. Yeah, because yeah, that was the time where hey. a lot of the, right. and I do love some of the emo bands from around that time, but sure. I noticed they all had kind of similar song titles, similar band names, and I said, I bet I can do that, and I did it. So just like drunken, like I'm just going to make yeah, an emo it took, song. it took an hour. We'd use a drum machine. I think Paolo played bass. Jason Sukoff recorded it, and I sang and played guitar. All right. Yep, and it's, it's a great song. It's online, too, so you just have to search head... Head on collision with a rose bush catching fire. For 15 years, you had been using an incorrect, self-taught, unclean vocal technique, uh, unclean as in guttural, uh, <laughs> which led to serious vocal cord damage by your late 20s. The beginning sounds like it was written by someone in like European English. For 15 years, you'd been using an incorrect, self-taught, unclean vocal yeah, technique. See, sounds like it. But true. Yeah, it's yes. true. Um, the screaming style that I picked up from when I was 13. Um, when I became the singer of Trivium and I didn't know what I was doing, couldn't find a singer, was a style that I used all the way up until about two and a half years ago or so when I yeah. blew my voice out at Rock in the Range. Mm -hmm. Had to fly home, send all the crew home with no pay, think I was done with singing. What we determined is that, yes, it was, done, it was due to the 100% incorrect screaming technique, which what I was doing is I was just screaming as loud and hard as I could. And just like right from your throat? Or right as from well? right here, yeah. yeah. So it always hurt like hell. It sounds great on the records. It was something that's unsustainable. Um, the singing technique was probably half incorrect, which is another issue that was wearing up my vocal cords. But for the last two plus years, I've been training with Ron Anderson, who I actually got in touch with Ron thanks to Matt from Avenge Sevenfold. When I blew my voice out oh, at Rock okay. on the Range, he was the first one to hear about it and first one to text me and said, hey, I heard about your voice. I'm sorry to hear about that. What can I do to help? He had similar issues himself, mm -hmm. I think, right? Yep, before yeah. City of Evil, but um, a yeah. different thing. I, I don't know if his was technique induced or not, mine was. Yeah. Um, and I asked him, what did you do? And he said, here's the name of my singing teacher. I've been training with Ron ever since. And now, for the first time in the last, I think maybe eight or 10 months, I've been screaming again. It sounds the exact same as the old technique, but it's a completely different uh, mechanical like usage of it. So there's oh, wow. no pain whatsoever. It's actually easier to do that than it is to speak. And it sounds the okay. same. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So do you think you're going to kind of get back into screaming a little bit? Oh, yeah. I'm screaming all the old stuff live again, finally. And I wasn't doing Great. that. I wasn't doing that for the first year after the yeah. injury. Yeah. But now everything off ascendancy. I mean, anything that's a background vocal that I can't physically sing both parts. I'm having Corey do the backup screaming, Paul sure. backup singing, and I do the main singing and screaming. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that, man. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, last one for you. 
It says, do you still use the same Gibson Les Paul that you first got from your father, both live and in the studio to this day? Not live, it's just a studio no. guitar now, and it's the one that we sent to Epiphone to model all my signatures off of. Okay. So live, I'm just playing my Epiphone signatures, but they're all based off that original guitar I got when I was a kid. Okay, so it's an Epiphone Les Paul? That one's a Gibson Les Paul. Yours is a Gibson. The original, original, for... and then the ones I play live are my Epiphones that are based off of that. Gotcha, all right. Don't want to bring that one on, on the road in case it gets broken. Yeah, just in case. Yeah, that, yeah. that's a sacred instrument. Yes, right that one there. doesn't come out anymore. Absolutely. I want to thank you so much for that playing. That was a lot of fun. Oh, was good. Fun. I'm glad you think so. I had fun, too. Awesome. Trivium, everybody. Silence in the snow. Get the record. Matt Heafy. Thank you.